Hi, I'm Allison Talley, and welcome to our uh, webinar on exploring career opportunities in industry. I'd like to recover some of the myths of industry, and later on you'll hear about resume and different job opportunities and, and, and other things about industry. Right now, I know that most of you are in academia and have been in school all your lives so far and, and don't maybe understand or recognize what other opportunities there are, so we'd like to talk about some of those right now, and I'm going to cover what maybe you think about industry first. So there you are sitting there thinking, what am I going to do after grad school? Am I going to go work for the USDA or one of the state governments, go into academia where I'm very comfortable, or go into the private sector? You know, what do I do? How do I pay off my loans? I know these are weighing heavily on you. So it's a, clearly a personal choice in what you want to do, but we'd like to talk to you about the industry part of it. First of all, uh, Dave Gaduri and a team in 2005 reviewed all the National Science Foundation information and found that 28.5 percent had employment after they graduated. Uh, this could have been 30 percent of those were, went to postdocs and about 70 percent went to, un to, uh, to unemployment. To employment. Uh, employers were academia, uh, 58 percent, industry, 13.8 percent, and the federal, state, or county governments, 23.8 percent. Uh, others may have been things like consultants. In the next slide, again, we're going to focus on the private sector. What can you do there? Do you think about it? So I'd like to talk about some of the myths. So what is a myth? It's a misconception, generally, an unfounded belief but it may influence people's decisions. So we'd like to uh, dispel some of the myths that you may have heard about industry. Now these come from our personal observation or comments that we've gotten. It's, it's not any, any uh, survey, specific survey that we've done, but just what people have said to us. So some of the things we'll cover are about publications, compensation, our scientific practice, uh, job security, and uh, a bit of miscellaneous potpourri. In the next slide, publish and be damned. We know there's great pressure for you to publish in academia. This is part of the tenure process, uh, and, and it's you know, really pushed on everybody. And the belief is that in industry, we don't have to publish. And that part is true. But the myth is, is that we can publish. They're not stopping us from being good scientists, and we can publish. It's not a requirement, but it, can, it is encouraged. So some of the things we publish on are new active ingredients or products, uh, innovative uses. Uh, we also are editors and review book chapters and contribute to those, some of those chapters. Uh, we have done fundamental research in collaboration with university colleagues, and our names appear along with theirs on different publications. Uh, we may help write patents for uh, new uses of products. And we also would participate with EPA working groups and may put out a position paper on a particular topic. So we can publish and our, and our name is also out there. So if you like to publish, that's great. The movie A Fistful of Dollars uh, came out before a lot of you were born, but the belief is, is that industry is really high paid. And for a time, that again was true. There was a time when uh, uh, the salaries were higher, clearly higher, but today the college salaries have actually caught up to industry. So um, in recent years that gap in starting salaries has closed. I know we had an experience uh, once with a university. We were both trying to hire the same person and the salary was exactly the same. Now if you take into account the overall compensation plan such as uh, the 401k, pensions, uh, bonus opportunities, and maybe even the vacations, the overall maybe does have, have an edge, but it's not quite the same gap as it once was. In scientific practice, our next slide, uh, the perception is that there's fundamental differences uh, in approaches between the private and the public sectors. But that's untrue. Our, first of all, our equipment is the same, and you'll see later on some of the equipment that we use. Our laboratory equipment, we have state-of-the-art PCR material, uh, 
machines, we have greenhouses. Uh, these all are the same as what a university would have. Uh, with the exception of studies that we need to do under good laboratory practices, like for our, for our residues, uh, the scientific approaches and techniques are the same. And we've worked closely with the universities on, uh, on some of these techniques and learned from them. So the science is good, it's genuine. Uh, we publish some of our materials and methods as well as our results. Uh, so we're, we're scientists like universities in every, every sense of the word. This is a picture of our uh, Syngenta Vero Beach research facility. Uh, it's got uh, a nice laboratory building. We have a section for entomology that's got some rearing rooms. We've got a pathology lab with all sorts of uh, refrigerators for keeping cultures and a, and a, a deep freezer. Uh, the slide to the lower left is the plot area so we can rotate the land between different seasons to plant different crops. Um, it is in South Florida, so there's some things that don't grow as well, but then we can also plant things over the winter that we can't do anyplace else. So it's a great research facility. There are differences in some of the nature of the products. Uh, in general, most of the universities are very basically applied, although not certainly not all of them, uh, but we are generally more applied. Uh, we also don't have a single focus. We work on many crops, many diseases, and many projects simultaneously. Uh, the scientists in the field get ad hoc requests. So uh, you may plan to do this today, but at the last minute you've got to do that because something else has come up and on short notice. Uh, projects have a shorter lifespan. Maybe uh, uh, people in the universities have the opportunity to really extend their research for several years to uh, learn all about something. Ours have a short focus. We, our goal is to get products registered, labels written, and to the market as fast as we can. And during that time frame, we're doing all the studies we need uh, to try to launch it. Job security and change. Now this is something again, that universities are perceived to have the tenure system and so you can't get fired. So if you're in with the university, you've got a job for a lifetime. Whereas with industry, you can get fired. So the belief is that there's a lack of job security uh, in comparison with the public sector. It's true, we don't have tenure, uh, and, but historically, most people stay with the same company for many years, but it's much less common these days. There's been considerable mergers, uh, rationalization of, of people and projects over the last 20 years, so uh, I think the trend will not likely to change. However, this is the norm, so there's people that this happens to, the good guys always survive and prosper, uh, there are jobs out there, and uh, especially you know, when you're an expertise in some of this, I mean, there's not many people that can do uh, what we do, so there are opportunities. The next slide, this, is, uh, this one's hard to read, but this is my colleague Paul Kuhn's business card. So his first uh, jobs were with Shell. I think he was in England, then he moved to America. So you see the little Shell card. Uh, Shell was bought out by American Cyanamid. He had different positions with Cyanamid. Uh, they merged with BASF, so he worked with BASF for a short time, and then he came to Syngenta. So he's always had employment, but his jobs changed, his company's changed, uh, but that's part of the uh, beauty about industry and, and the people that work there is that we are flexible, it's always exciting, there's always new projects. So flexibility, the first bullet point here is really key. Um, while you may end up with a job where you stay right where you are for 20 years, chances are you're going to be asked to move or change jobs from what you initially were hired to do to go into regulatory or go manage a group of, of chemists. I mean, there's all sorts of different opportunities. Adaptability, change your management skills. You know, it, it's really interesting is when you have one job and now all of a sudden you have a different job, how your perception will change and the way you interact changes because you're different, dealing with different people. Uh, risk taking. Again, we are on a short time frame. Sometimes we take more risk, uh, but uh, that's part of it. 
And, you know, sometimes you step out of a job just to go do something else that you might never have a chance to do again. So the next slide is a quote from uh, Brian O'Reilly uh, back in 1994, uh, which is still applicable today. There will never be job security. You will be employed by us as long as you add value to the organization and you are continuously responsible for finding ways to add value. Let's read that again. You are continuously responsible for finding ways to add value. So we don't want to hire a person who is just going to summarize data. We want to hire a person that will summarize that data, think of new ways to use that data, think of new experiments we might do. So you have to help yourself and add value to the company and really contribute. Some of the views on the private sector on business integrity we are for-profit companies. We're not a public sector. We're not a nonprofit. We are out there to sell our products and make money. However, that doesn't mean that we're unethical. We are governed by strict codes of conduct. Each company has courses that are mandated to take things like bribery or collusion, uh, uh, how to treat people. You know, you, you can't. You can't, what am I trying to say? You can't discriminate, uh, you know, how we treat the environment. These are all things that are mandated that we take. And if we mess up, we're fired for that. I mean, it, it, these are legal things that we must do. On product safety, these are highly regulated by the EPA. We do all the required studies and then some. Uh, so we make sure that our products not only are efficacious to use, but they're safe to use according to the label. On our value and contribution, with the need to feed 9 billion people by 2050, the private sector has to be in the forefront. We are busy you know, with genetics, biotechnology, new chemistry, all the things that are needed to grow more crops on fewer acres with better yields. So the take-home message is, is get well-informed, network. The APS meeting or the regional meetings are a good way to meet industry people. Uh, look at internships opportunities. There are not many out there, but most of the field reps will hire an intern for the summer so you can get hands-on experience. Uh, do some research on the Internet, see what kind of products people are bringing to the market, uh, whether they're chemical products, biological, there, there's all sorts of things to do, even consulting. Uh, we are happy to come present seminars uh, at the universities. So we, we love to meet with the students. Uh, we like to identify students. So perhaps there's a job opportunity open when, uh, when you graduate. So we, you have to meet us, uh, and, and we, we enjoy that. Attend the industry lunch. It's free, and uh, whatever else you can do. So with that, uh, good luck in your career.